at that point, if any of you knew anything about anyone who knew the history of this sale barn, we would like to know. Well, you'll be pleased to know that I had uh, several phone calls, but one from uh, uh, Shirley who said, Mr. Hubert Lebo worked with my dad. Shirley Campbell said, Mr. Hubert Lebo worked with my dad here at this sale barn from the time it began. So we asked Mr. Lebo if he would come out and chat with us a little bit about this, about this old sale barn, about his work here in these past years, and this Mr. Hubert Lebo. And Hubert, it's sure good to meet you. Good to meet you. Now, you you worked here when it was new. I have built this barn back, in, I, I started work out here in 1938. 1938? Yeah. How old were you? I was about 18 years old. Okay, now if you figure that out, you can tell how old he is now, but I can't do that that fast. <laughs> So you were about 18 and you helped build this. Uh, and, and who owned this at the time? Well, Clyde Lunsford, when Bob Clark, Tom Dawes, and Fred Riggins bought it, Clyde Lunsford owned it. He had that old oil mill. The oil mill wasn't even there then. Okay. And uh, it was uh, what they call a mule going on in. All right. Now, uh, what about the mules in 1938? Uh, are people still buying and selling mules? They done that up to about, uh, I'd say, 70. They bought and sold horses and everything like that. And what stopped it? Well, they just tractors and such as that, you know, they just quit farming with them. Now, I have heard and that... We, we shipped all the mules and horses and everything like that to Chicago and made dog food out of them. <laughs> yeah. You mean after... Yeah. But a Missouri mule was a real prize yeah. back in the... Did you yeah. ever plow with a mule? Yeah. I used to farm all this ground out here. All yeah. right. Now, what was that? The, the oil mill wasn't here. The sail barn wasn't here. What was here along this strip? There wasn't no... Uh, what to call mom. Mom had a... Well, uh, a dance hall right across the street there. Oh. And the boot was here. And that was about all there was here. Clyde Lunsford had the mule barn. And so the first thing was, mules were primarily what was sold in here. Well, the first thing sold in this barn. Then Bob Clark and Don Dawson and Fred Riggins bought it. And it, it was just, uh, I could show you how big it was when uh -huh. I was there. Okay, how? I have to get around that side. All right, let's go around the side. You show me around that side and I'll show you how big it was. Now, you mean it's been built on to? It's been built on men, men, uh, Roll Chambers, I don't know if you ever know the Roll Chambers or not, but he helped build all this. You know what that looks like? <laughs> what is that? That's, that's just a regular toilet. Okay, it, and it did have a, it did have, hey, there's still, yeah. there's still a lock on the door. Yeah. And, you know, I built that for the ladies. There wasn't no running water or nothing back in days, you know. Yeah. There wasn't no bathrooms or nothing like that. And you built this for the ladies? Yeah, for the ladies. Okay, did you have... Bookkeepers. Oh, okay, I started to say, did you have many ladies that came out? To well, you? oh, yeah. Well, Miss Clark and Betsy Riggie and uh, Miss yeah. Rogers was a bookkeeper. So, they, had so they sat on this throne many a time? Many a time. Okay, now you were going to show me how how big uh, this, this well, barn, barn was. That's how big the barn was. that second, the second story is where that yeah, raise is? Yeah, right there where the raise is at. That's how big the barn was then. And we we built all the rest of it on both sides. Put them back and put it go build okay, up. Okay, and now what is that? Build all that. What is that across there? Out there, what was that for? I, I was for cattle. All right. Went, that was a cattle pen. Okay, we now, okay. We kept overnight. Can we walk back here and yeah. you, uh, and, uh, now, what did the trucks do? Did they back up right yeah. here? They backed up right there and loaded out hogs. That was a hog chute. That's they, a hog chute. They put all the hogs over on this side of the barn and cattle over on the other side okay, of the barn. Okay, so the cattle loaded from the far side. From the far side. Okay, now did you begin at the beginning selling hogs and cattle too, or was it just strictly a mule barn? No. Well, what, what they done when the sale barn started, they sold mules and horses. They said it at 10 o'clock. They sold them to, they got through with them sometimes at one. Then they sit in on the hogs, sold hogs, till they got out of them that day, you know. And then uh, they sit in that, 
and sold the cattle. Okay. And I worked out here from 6 o'clock in the morning to that night. So to two? About 6 o'clock in the morning. I would stay till 2 and 3 o'clock in the morning, ch check it in, check it out. And okay. the, sale, the sale sold sometimes, you know, the auctioneer, he sold at 12, 12 and 1 o'clock at okay. night. Okay. Now, yeah. now, who would bring in these mules? Where did these mules come from? They well, weren't just locally raised, were they? Well, a lot of them, a lot of them, they brought most of them in around Poplar Bluff and up in there where they raised mules and horses. I used to have two gates you pulled together like that and had a pair of electric clippers. And I sure mules and horses and never had a bridle, just get them up out of the woods, you know. And they'd get down on them the hand, knee, kick, paw. The mules out. would get down on their, on their yeah. knees? They play them electric clippers, you know. Oh, and well, why were you clipping them? Well, sure, they're main off, you know. They'd be, they'd be grown up, you know. Yeah, they would never be a touch, you know, and the, the old man be drooled way down, you know, and I'd take him like a clipper. Sure. <laughs> and have you ever been kicked? I'm crippled. Crippled? Yeah. From a, from a mule kicking you? From a horse, yeah. While you were trying to clip him, or? No, I, I was just working him. I walked up behind him and he kicked me. Okay. Yeah, I, when I was about 14 years old. All right. Are mules really as stubborn as people say? Yeah, yeah. You think they're not smart as horses, or do you think they're... Horses smarter. Horses yeah. smart. Yeah. Yeah, a mule ain't very... He's a dumb old animal, but, you know, he he made the country. Mule did. Yeah, yeah. He, he made the country. pulled all these drainage boats up and down. And logs and... And, 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 and built the railroads and whatever. Cleared the land and everything. Built lots of highways, mules did. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, the one that goes to Haytown Crothersville now was built by mules, right? Bert Richardson, yeah. Okay. Did yeah. you did you help do any of that? No. County line out there. When I was a boy, his, my uncle bought some of that land down there, and they had to pull him out of there, down that county line on a mud boat. They had to pull him out? On a mud boat. On a mud, you uh, mean just to get out? Uh, on the mules, yeah. Okay. Pulled him up the highway. Okay. <laughs> All right. So, so everybody had uh, every forty acres had a mule at the, in those days. Yeah, yeah, that's all war. Just mule and horses. Okay. Yeah. And then you begin to see a decline. What year did uh, did the mules? When did you say till about seventy? The mules were be really being bought and sold. Me and Bob Clark, we used to trade and partners. And we go down in around Barber and all down in there where the mule and horses was leaving, you know. Yeah. We'd buy them by the car loads. We had a man out of Chicago, had a fox farm. We'd bring him up here and put 22 head on the box car and ship to Chicago. That's what we were mule and horses. And he would, uh, he would grind them up and feed them to his the, foxes? The old man told me that the, the steaks, they made steaks out of the back quarter and the rest of it into fox food. And they ate? Yeah. In the city. Yeah. In the city. You reckon people knew they were eating an old Missouri oh, mule? Yeah, they said they'd buy horse meat before they would beef. Well, now, I've tried to cook <laughs> horse meat, and it's not all that tender. <laughs> that's so. what I thought. Uh, especially an old mule that's been plowed till he's, till he's pretty old. I wouldn't eat it. Okay. But that's right. That's, uh, that's, what, that's what went with mule and horses. Uh, there's a fellow by the name of Gene Reeves. He hauled him out of here. They hauled him up at uh, Cape. Up at the tankage place, made tankage out of it. Yeah. That's what they're doing with them. Okay. Old mule and horses, that's what they're doing with them. All right. And when when did you quit working out here? I quit working out here, I guess, in 80, about 85. Uh, uh, have you heard that this place is going to be torn down? Yeah, yes, well. And it makes me very sad. I've been walking around over just looking it over, thinking about what I used to do out here and what people used to do and everything like that. It makes me very sad. Could we go in, do you think? I, it, it's we, pretty dark in there, but can I, we go in? I believe we can go around at the back and go we in. We don't have to go through the hog shoot or anything, do we? Yeah, but it, it, it's a whole mobbing around there. Okay, all right. You, you can get in there. You. I can get in? Yeah. All right. Let me open that door back here. Uh, well, 
the, immediately when we step in the door, the first thing you see is an old Prince Albert can. Um, I tell you what, it's a sign of antiquity, isn't it? Now uh, this was the ring, and people got up on each side and see. Well, up from here, sit right here. Bookkeeper sat right there. And they had a big bill up here whenever the sale started. They took the bill down and rung the bill. Of course, option here, he started. And they had a have you ever seen this full of people? Couldn't even get in here. Oh, really? No, you couldn't even. Both sides? Both sides. They stood on the outside and looked over that gate. All right. Me and Ron Chamber built that gate back in the 40s. Fixed a place where you could climb over the other and everything. But the fellow from home come in this side. The auctioneer, whenever he sold it, they went out on that side, and that was the scales. They weighed it, they went right across the scales. Where was the scales? That's them right there. That's right here? Oh, okay. That's the scale. They went right on them. They weighed everything and went out. Now. Now, well, why did they weigh? Why did they weigh as they went? Sold by the pound, hogs. Oh, the hogs sold by the pound. Yeah. But now the mules, you just bought it. Uh, the mules, they went through there and they weighed No, no. Now, now, what am I seeing? What's all this up? Uh, well, right there's, the, right there's the paper that they kept up there in that log. Uh, back in this day, a Mr. Young from the Kenneth Sales Company bought six White pigs, is that what that means? And he paid $207, uh, 10, 17, 1972. 1972. I asked one, up to one Bob and them sold it out. Okay. I bet you some of their papers is blowed down. People go up there and tore them boxes down. See, we kept all that stuff. Okay, now here's, now here's a canceled check. Yep. Uh, and this canceled check is from 1963, and it was by M.K. Radicam, and it was made to Kenneth Thornton, right? $649. What do you suppose he bought? He bought more cattle. Okay. All right. Um, interesting. Interesting. A lot of old checks, a lot of old sale bills. Somebody got up there and told all that stuff down, looking for something, you know, people yeah. pilfer. Okay, now, can we go back and kind of look at the stall? Well, okay, we, do you think? Yeah, we can go back through there if you want to, if you think you can get through there. Well, now, can know. you get through there? Me and you both. All right, now, hang on to something, and we're going to step over all these. Um, this, this is going to fall. I, I don't think so. There's. Eve, down here, there's a key up here, one up there. It lost up there. They had all the papers up there from years back, you know. Yeah. And uh, Was this place heated? Did uh, it have heaters in it anywhere? No, uh -uh. Okay, just just open. Now, there's a scale for it. Wait Yeah. See, it's right on this. Oh, and yeah, I see Fairbanks, uh, yeah. Fairbanks scales I see through yeah, here. Okay. Now, you know what I'm looking at here? I'm looking at a book, a, a checkbook I just picked up uh, from Vernie Lance. Vernie Lance, yeah. You know Vernie Lance? McCoy. Oh, and he paid $16.12 on the Cotton Exchange Bank. Uh, well, no, they paid that.